us. We just, I mean, we just stared. I, I can't say I cried. I didn't. I was, I think you're stunned. You know, you just, you don't know what to do. I didn't really understand up until that point what fire could do or how, just how destructive it could be. I mean, I put too much into this. I am not backing out now. Well, Charlotte's began in um, the fall of 2012. I worked at John Deere for 39 years and decided I wanted to do something afterwards. I vacation out in San Diego a lot and happened to stay at a, a VRBO with a coffee shop on the main floor. And so I said, I want, it, I want to be like that. That's what I want to have. We purchased it in 2012. I retired in April of 2013. We completely gutted it and they worked on it for two years. And in September of 2015, we opened up Charlotte's. When we first decided to do vacation rentals, my husband said, well, he'd like to have something after his family. So it's the Drake House Vacation Rentals, and Drake was his mother's maiden name. So then I said, well, for the coffee house, then we have to have somebody in my family. And I think Charlotte is a pretty name. And my mother, she passed away when, uh, in 1970. She was only 44 years old, and she died of breast cancer. And she loved coffee. I know if my mother could is looking down, she would be smiling for sure. The year after I opened up, I did everything. I did scheduling, I did all the baking. I had like seven employees. Usually at the end of the day when I tried to count the money, I was so tired, I would fall asleep and start over about four or five times. And then at the end, I'd just say, forget it. Well, I first found out about Charlotte's through the family that lived next door at the time. I was looking for weekend hours, and I worked for about three or four months. Then I met my future wife, and I had to commute to see her, so I stepped down here. Cheryl and I stayed in touch, but then a couple years later, in February of 2018, I ran into her randomly at Sam's. She just told me that the current manager was planning on leaving in the summer, and if I'd reconsider coming back to to work for her. I knew that the timing was right for me and my now family. I came back in June of 2018. In July of 2018, we had a major fire which engulfed the entire business. You just don't realize what the loss of something, what it can bring together for the people who were affected by this life. There was a sense of loss in the community that I didn't realize how many lives this place touches or how many people sense that hominess and all of a sudden it was gone. When we got the call, it was um, whatever, two o'clock in the morning. Here was the one guest that was in the building and, and he said, Cheryl, you have a major fire at the Drake house, the Drake house on fire. My husband and I just jumped out of bed and in a panic that we got to senior high and we could see the smoke and it was like, oh my gosh, I hope that's not it. And uh, we got down and um, sure enough it was. So what happened was the vacation rentals, we used to provide a little charcoal grills on their decks. So one of the guests had, you know, used it Saturday night. Well, then the next day, our girls cleaned. Um, they dumped the used coals in the garbage and took it down and put it in the trash can right outside the building. They smoldered for nine hours and 1.30 in the morning. It broke out and we had security cameras on the garbage can and so you could see a little glow uh, between the lid and the garbage can and like two minutes later the glow was this big and about five minutes later it was up the entire side of the building. I remember when it first happened it was just like oh my gosh like actually that happened? To me it was like are they going to be able to bounce back? For the morning of the fire I came down here how bad it was and it was way worse than I thought. We had so many people come a friend of mine came that morning, you know, you, just, you don't know how to think about it. I mean, that always happens to someone else. It doesn't happen to you. 
I was standing out in the front looking at everything and um, she came running up to me and she was just sobbing. She was crying and just put her arms around me and I'm just like, oh, you know, I, you know, because you just, you don't know how to wrap your arms around it, you know, and just how to process, what am I going to do? I just hired this guy and all these other kids that are working at our place now all of a sudden they're out of a job. I, I told Cheryl, you know, if uh, I understand if I need to go do something else, I'll come back when you guys reopen. Um, and I just said, hey, we, you know, we'll keep paying you the same if you help us rebuild. So, I, I mean, I was, I was really excited to be an honored to be asked to be part of that process. So I think overall the primary way the community helped was just letting us know how much they missed us. People stopped down constantly for probably the first month, you know, saying, oh, we're so sorry what happened, you know, please rebuild. We had so much support from, from Dubuque, from the community, from the Chamber of Commerce, and from other small businesses. The guy that ran that made phone calls to other businesses because all of a sudden, you know, we had obviously no electricity. Several different um, small businesses that had walk-in coolers and freezers, you know, let us use theirs. And in addition to that, you know, there's a fundraiser and just people offering support, donating, buying things, you know, there'd be a wedding and people would call Cheryl and be like, hey, can I buy 30 scones? So just different things like that where you just really felt appreciated and missed. And the next morning, so KCRG came to interview me and they're like, well, what are you going to do? You think you'll try to rebuild? And I said, absolutely. I mean, I put too much into this. I am not backing out now. Spent another 13 months to rebuild again, and so we made some changes, and here we are. We actually made sandwiches behind the bar when we first opened. And, and well, the people who were there, they all joke about that. Like, hey, remember when you used to be able to just like watch people make food and you know see the place grow, see it become a success, then the fire, uh, the rebuilding process, how the community came around us and really encouraged us. I would say that they wanted us to come back bigger and better. So I started working at Charlotte's right after we reopened from the fire um, and then just started as a barista and a cook and now I'm the team supervisor of this location. When I started there were just the few managers and Cheryl the owner and then some shift leads um, but then after a while they figured we need to grow our management a little bit. Gotten a little bit more departmentalized where Tim takes care of, he's taking care of the satellite locations and here, and then Tom takes care of here. I take care of all the baking along with my sister, which I'd be lost without her. So I started out with between five and seven, and now I've got 39. So yeah, it's, it's exciting now, I love it. Cheryl welcomes everyone with open arms. She's tried to have that sense permeate this whole place. You know, if once you spend time with Cheryl, she'll ask you questions, who you are, where you're from, what are you about, and so that's probably the best way, you know, if you can find people that genuinely care about other humans, it just kind of creates an aura where people walk in and they feel cared about. I know my husband says I work too many hours, but I do feel at home here. Kind of, I don't know, I, it, to me it feels like family. So we reopened July of 2019 in the pandemic. I mean, we just like six months were reopened and just kind of getting some traction, getting back to where we were and then that, and then we were required to close. So we closed. I was already engaged since last year and we were planning a fall wedding in September, but after a few days, just after COVID had hit, and it was like June and we're just like, we should just elope because we had to, restrict our seating indoors so I got to borrow all the extra chairs that were just stacked up and they're like yeah use our chairs you <laughs> and yeah that's one of my best memories and that's what Charlotte's and the family environment means to me. I guess if I was destitute and had no means to keep it going I mean if you don't have a choice but I had a choice and so 
my choice was to keep it going. Charlotte's the company and Cheryl are pretty inseparable. You know, she is the heart and soul of this place. She puts in more hours than anyone else. Um, it wouldn't be here without her. Just her story, a retiree starting a coffee shop, thinking it was going to be this little thing and, you know, it kind of exploded on her. Um, it's just a great story and I'm glad I'm part of it, you know. And so, I'd just like to see it succeed. I don't know how much we are the community spot, but if we are, I would say it's because that's our, our mission, which is to be the living room of the community, a place where you can connect with friends or self over a, a good cup of coffee and quality food. Here she is, she's remembered now. And you might think this is uh, goofy or whatever, but I think we have survived through so much. I mean, first we had a major fire and now this pandemic and everything, and it's like we keep surviving. She just wants this to succeed.